Hey everybody, welcome back to another speaker video and this one's going to be a little bit different than some of our other videos. In this video we're actually going to compare two different BMW speakers. One that's a little over 15 years old and a new model and we're going to look at the two compared to one another. I'm going to call that kind of part one where we just look at the construction of each of them. Then part two, I'm going to focus on just this model and we're going to look at the measurements on it and what I wound up doing with that one. And then part three, we're going to look at this newer model. We're going to look at the measurements on this one and look at the faults and the problems and go through that one and show you what I did with it. So we have a 15 year old model here. That's the BMW 705 model. Then here to my right, we've got the newer uh, BMW 606 S2 version, which is a brand new speaker that they've got. Um, there are a lot of similarities between the two. They haven't really changed a lot in 15 years, but there's also some things that have changed. Um, construction of each of them, obviously different. Um, this older model here is made a lot heavier, and it's got the curved top section here on it. The tweeter is in its own little pod that sits on top of the speaker that really minimizes the diffraction and problems with the surface area. It does definitely make the speaker sound a little more transparent than one that's playing straight from the front baffle. This tweeter can actually be unscrewed, removed. I can disconnect it, put it back. It can be swapped out. If you stick your finger in it, it could be replaced. This newer model is designed in a little bit of a throwaway fashion. It's mounted from the back side, and it's almost impossible to swap this thing out. If you were to stick your finger into that thing, well, buy another speaker. That's kind of the way they've got that set up. And it's got a little a wire mesh that goes over it, and I took measurements of it with and without that. And sorry about the microphone being right in front of it there. Um, that's kind of the only place I had left on the desk to put the microphone. So this one is a little more lightly constructed. Um, there is one brace in it. The brace runs this way through it and it is, looks like MDF box with a particle board brace. This one on the other hand is, looks like it's all MDF and again, a little heavier. Uh, it has the flared port with the little dimples on it that they came out with back in the day. This one has the port on the back with the same little dimples on it. Um, this cheesy little binding post on the back. Yes, the parts are some of them are ferromagnetic, not what you want in the signal path. Uh, we had the same thing on the older model. This one, I pulled everything, all the guts out of it. It had actually six, uh, no, I'll take it back. It had three steel nuts on each binding post. So there was a lot of steel parts in this one for the signal to have to pass through. So Boo there. Uh, woofer wise, these things are really similar. Um, the frames on these are almost of the same structure and design. The woofers are about the same size. This one has the pointy dust cap versus this one has a dust cap that feels like a little plastic dust cap, but it has some type of a feltish material over the top of it. So it's kind of a soft, fuzzy feel versus the uh, the shape here that looks like one of the phase plugs, but it's not. Um, this one is a Kevlar, and back in the day they really advertised the bulletproof material that they were using. This has the same look, but I have a feeling this is fiberglass. It, it really has kind of a more of a feel of fiberglass. I don't know. If this is Kevlar, it's definitely not yellow Kevlar. It is, um, and it feels a little different in the way it's damped. It feels like it has a little more damping qualities than the Kevlar. The Kevlar definitely has a stiffer feel to it. Um, taking these apart were pretty easy. Um, this one mounts with just two screws and then it has a massive steel plate that goes down over it that locks down on it and screws everything down. This one has a lot of screws holding it down and then it's just got a beauty ring that snaps on to the speaker and the way to remove it is you just gently go around the inside edge and you pop the little four push-in connectors off and it comes comes straight off and then you can unscrew it. Um, at least you can take the woofer out. You could not take the tweeter out unless you get real creative on 
fancy tools with a mirror on the back side and it yeah that'd be a mess crossover wise these are very different they they have about the same quality in a sense the woofers both have decent air core inductors on them this one has a first order slope the newer one has a first order crossover so one coil one cap and the cap is a polypropylene cap and it's got two tiny little resistors on it um, the older style second order filter it has the little square polyester film caps sand cast resistors it does have a little air core inductor on the tweeter circuit so there's your basic construction differences um, this one definitely looks like it has a wood veneer this one feels more like it's vinyl wrapped um, and it has a painted front so this one is definitely made a, a little more cheaply and it's priced more cheaply this is a $900 mini monitor whereas the older one here retailed at $1,500 and that was back in no, 2003, 2004, something like that. I think Stereo, Stereofile reviewed it in 2004. So it's it's been a while. So um, modern terms, this would be more of a $2,000 speaker price points of today versus the $900 model here. Do you get a sense of there's $1,000 worth of difference in these two? No, definitely not. Um, performance wise is this as good as the old eh, maybe not in some ways it's not bad but in other ways it's not as good as the minimal surface reflection you get around the tweeter and a pod uh, the older version definitely is a prettier speaker looks nicer but let's get into the guts we're gonna go from here straight into part two and we're gonna look at this model the 705 and then we're going to get this thing out of the way and we're going to talk about this thing and what we did then we're going to go do the same with the newer model so hang on for part two 